Good morning, everyone. Today, I humbly stand before you and deliver words on gratitude in this challenging season. As we enter the 10th month of navigating the COVID-19 pandemic, uncertainty has permeated all aspects of our lives. Things we once took for granted, such as going to class, gathering with friends and families, and worshiping God in a sanctuary, now have come with an extra level of stress, anxiety, and grief. Uncertainty in human science can be understood in two ways. First, uncertainty means a deficit in knowledge. We, humans, by gaining information, we learn to predict and control our environments with a sense of agency and confidence. However, as global leaders have been doing their best to get this pandemic under control, we constantly see that the rules and regulations are constantly changing on a daily basis. When will a vaccine be available in our community? When can we finally take off our mask and freely give hugs and shake hands with friends and families? Since I'm new here, I've been asking, when would I be able to see Robert Carr Chapel filled with students, faculty and staff coming together to worship God? Second, uncertainty has a subjective component, which refers to our personal feeling of not knowing. In a time like this, we feel uncertain about our perception, attitudes and values which force us to feel uncomfortable and powerless. Compared to informational uncertainty, personal uncertainty is located in our own sense of identity. We feel unsure of who we are and who we are becoming. We begin to feel so small, insignificant, and vulnerable. Because of this complex and indescribable state of uncertainty, many of us have lost confidence in our sense of self without direction in life. Seemingly, the only thing that we can be certain of right now is that this aversive feeling of uncertainty will continue in our immediate future. Today, Still in the midst of uncertainty, we encounter this Jewish teenage girl in Luke's gospel, who is essentially asking the same questions about her identity. After hearing this monumental and shocking news that the divine has entered into her human self. How can this be? Why does God show favor on a lowly young girl like me? How would I be able to explain this to my fiance? How could I ever understand and carry this grand and weighty vision of God? Wrapped in such uncertainty, Mary was afraid, confused, and overwhelmed. Yet, with the spirit-filled encouragement from her kinswoman, Elizabeth, Mary begins to embrace her uncertainty by remembering and narrating who God is, eventually breaking out in songs with joy that has come to be known as the Magnificat. My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my savior for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Mary has no petition, but only praises. She praises God by describing who God is and what God has done for someone like her. Mary calls God holy and merciful because God has done great things for her, making her the mother of God who will reign over the house of Jacob forever. It was not only the lips, but the soul and spirit of Mary that praise God's holy character and mighty deeds. 
by magnifying the Lord, her spirit rejoices in thanksgiving and in gratitude. Furthermore, moved by the Holy Spirit, Mary is now able to imagine and even foresee the future by saying, surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed. While still in the midst of uncertainty, she has gained her new identity, a blessed person. She is blessed and she will be blessed. Who would have imagined this country girl from the despised village of Nazareth to become the mother of the son of God? Now Mary declares herself as a blessed one with her new identity she finally embraces the vision of God in humility and wonder. Friends and colleagues, we've been struggling with different layers of, layers of uncertainty in this challenging season for a long time. And we've been facing countless unanswered questions about our circumstances and about our identity. But in this season of Thanksgiving and the upcoming Advent, let us take a pause for a moment and remember that in spite of it all, we are still blessed. And let our spirits rejoice by acknowledging our weakness and vulnerability and still claim that we are blessed people of God, no matter what difficulties and ch challenges might make us feel fragile and helpless. Uncertainty will continue, but we can be only certain of this one promise. Nothing can separate us from the love of our magnificent God. May we continue to rejoice in God with thanksgiving and gratitude. Amen.